Welcome back to week nine of the 52 Frames Challenge. This week, we move the camera, or in the photography terms, intentional camera movement, also known or abbreviated as ICM. I love, love, love this challenge, but it was a tough week when it came to decision on which one to submit. Let's start by looking at what ICM really is. ICM, Intentional Camera Movement, is when your shutter is open a little bit longer and while shooting the photo, you move the camera. Why would you do that? Well, in my mind, there's three reasons. The first one is you got bored with a typical shot of something and wanted to try something else. It's a nice way of emphasizing texture as well as colors, especially in nature, because somehow nature just always gets colors right. Lastly, it's to add movement to the subject. Adding movement is usually done by panning, which means you focus on a subject while it moves and the background will blur while you take the photo and leaving the subject relatively sharp. I'm a huge fan of ICM. It just adds something different to a photo, a bit more interest or a dreamy effect that makes you look a little bit longer at a photo. The ICM technique has produced some of my favorite photos in the past. So this week, the most planning really went into location again, since once on location, then you start to play around with the different shutter speeds and panning speeds and so forth. Thus, I decided this week to go to two locations. The first was nature orientated, the Al Qudra Reserve, and the second was city orientated, the trusty Dubai Mall, which is always Camera friendly, although not tripod friendly. But since I didn't need a tripod and I wanted to move my camera, that was perfect for this week to try my hand at ICM with architecture specifically. So what I've done is I've shut my shutter, I've put on the uh, polarizer and in the three filter just to block out some light. Um, I've got it at F11 to get a bit more detail in. And then I try to find a focus point uh, in the center. And then while I'm shooting with the longer exposure, a third of a second, I zoom out and it creates the object is sharp and in focus, but um, the environment makes streaks, so it's like a zoom effect. So I found some swans that make perfect subjects for the blurring motion, while the zoom motion, so let's see if we'll get something there. So the other thing to note is that the tension ring 
can make each division in each order to pull and pull your zoom. I've made that to the loose so that when I, I and I've tried this uh, both ways, but it's easier to zoom in, focus on the subject, and then while shooting, zoom out. And if your tension ring is on its loose, it makes it a lot more, a lot easier. Okay, so these little brushes might make the core abstract. If I just zip it like that, it might work. Oh, they are baby ducklings. <laughs> so good. The other thing I can do is try to pan one of the birds. So you move along with the bird, making the rest blurry and just focusing on the bird. The biggest trick with that is getting the speed correct. So you have to follow the bird at the same speed that it's moving, as well as get the shutter speed at the correct speed that the bird is moving. And one of the reasons why I came here today is to practice that since we're going to Botswana. Oh. I think that's the bird of prey. But now I'm on a slow shutter speed, so I won't be able to check which bird of prey that is. Being the only one at Al Qudra was an absolute bliss. And here are a few photos I took during this morning. Okay, so I'm at Dubai Mall in the middle of the day. It's probably the quietest you'll see it in any case. But I've got a few things I would like to try and give a shot. Okay, so the first thing is the restaurants in Fashion Avenue that I can pan horizontally. I find that see where the lines go naturally and take the panning in that direction. The three umbrellas there, I think, might make a cool focal point. So I'll try to incorporate that as well. Then we've got, obviously, the never-ending Burj Khalifa, which goes on forever. But the problem there is the very bright streets there might be the problem. So we'll see how that comes out. I'll also try to focus on details such as that frangipanis as well as that night sign. I'll try the same as I did with the uh, birds earlier this morning. And then lastly, all these palisades which also got harsh shadows which might make a cool abstract as well.
of these your favorite or are they all just one big blurry mesh to you? Let me know in the comments below. The discussion on which photo to submit was quite lengthy between Tarsis and myself. And two days later, I really had to make the decision on which photo to submit since the deadline was approaching fast. Our tie was between the night shot and the swan shot. And I decided to go with the swan since that was my favorite because I love the dreamy effect and the effect of the lines pulling you into this dreamy swan with its very red beak. I tried to keep this week edit fairly subtle, focusing mainly to soften up that texture and enhance the color, especially that red beak of the swan. This week, I did not only take photos of ICM technique, but couldn't resist the urge to take a few traditional photos while on location if I see something I'm going to capture it, especially an animal which I've never seen before, the Patagonian Mora, a very strange, apparently rodent animal living in the UAE. I've mentioned my love for this technique before. But the photo of the day actually went to ICM. It was a traditional shot of three umbrellas taken at Dubai Mall. Next week, it's all about symmetry. Thank you for watching and see you then.